Aloha, spooky nerds. I am Aaron Sagers, journalist, author, researcher of all things weird, and currently I can be seen on Travel Channel's Paranormal Caught on Camera, which we just wrapped our fifth season. And this is Talking Strange with Den of Geek. It's a paranormal pop culture show where we explore the entertainment of the unexplained. And let me tell you about a show that I've been definitely enjoying. I've been watching all the episodes. Can't wait for it to come back. It is Ghosts on CBS, which airs Thursdays at 9 p.m. 8 central, which you can watch on CBS and also on Paramount+. Plus. Now, what is the deal with Ghosts? Within the story, Samantha and Jay throw caution to the wind when they convert their recently inherited country estate, which is pretty run down into a bed and breakfast. So this place is falling apart. Also happens to be haunted by spirits of previous residents. And as it happens, only Sam can see and hear these ghosts. Ghost really combines a funny, heartfelt story about this newfound dream that reveals connection, self-discovery are not just for the living. And also, it currently leaves the primetime TV ratings for new shows. So it is a hit, a bona fide hit, adapted from the British series of the same name. Ghost was developed by Joe Port and Joe Wiseman, and it stars Rose McIver from iZombie and Ukarsh and Budkar, which we most recently saw in Free Guy. So without further ado, let me bring these folks in. We've got Joe Port is with us and Joe Wiseman. Hello, gentlemen. And the stars of Ghost, Rose McIver and Bukarsh and Bukar. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining this uh, this little chat. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here with you all. I'm going to put myself in the middle, so I'm the, the thick, surrounded by... The humans behind ghosts. Hey, hey. thanks for having us. Love what you've yeah. done with the place. Looks gorgeous. <laughs> I know it's yeah, all the nice gray look that I have <laughs> here. Uh, first off, actually, congratulations on leading the primetime TV ratings for new shows. Where are you guys? I know I'm catching you in production right now. You had to take a little bit of a break in December. Where are you right now? I'll throw this to to the Joes. Where are we in the production process? Uh, so we are, I believe, four days away from wrapping season one. So we are all back in Montreal. And uh, we had a day of shooting today. And like I say, we have four more. Yeah, back in December, we, you know, we, we, we had our, our COVID issues, as a lot of productions are. So we had to cool down for a little while. Um, but everyone's here, and we're, uh, we're hoping to get it done. OK. And uh, Joe Port, let me ask you, is this a workplace comedy? Is it a family sitcom? Is it a supernatural show? It feels like there's all these different elements happening within Ghosts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it's a little bit of all those things. I mean, uh, the bed and breakfast is not yet open. So uh, that's sort of what we're he heading toward, toward the end of the season, uh, that Sam and Jay are trying to uh, renovate the place and open it up and you know, then it'll be a true workplace comedy. But it's just sort of like a, I would call it a, a weird roommate comedy with a, <laughs> a with sort of a rom-com at the center. In, All right. In mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's good Rose you do this, Carson. Aaron, because every time you ask questions, we learn uh, things as well. Like, <laughs> I'm like, great, I'm going to use exactly that tidbit in the next chat that I have. Now I have the descriptions sorted. <laughs> Little sound, sound bites that you can take exactly. along to the next interview. We need writers oh. with all of with all of our interviews. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, let me ask you guys. Uh, you know, from the acting perspective, this is you guys each have unique and similar challenges because. You know, Rose, your character, Sam, you you are pretending to see and hear things that others, the living, do not see. And Ukarsh, you're kind of staring off into the middle distance, uh, you know, which you're kind of pseudo interacting with something that you cannot see. So do you find that you are each relating to one another from these unique but separate challenges or... I don't know who thinks that maybe they have the harder job going on here. Uh, Rose, why don't you start? 
<laughs> oh, I mean, I, I'm very lucky in that I get all of the the cast to play with. We have this insanely talented group, and um, I have eight scene partners essentially, as well as my living scene partner Utkash. Um, so I feel really spoiled that a lot of it is just kind of being being an audience to to these guys and being able to engage with them on that level. So it sucks for Utkash that he can't um, engage yeah, but- on that level. I mean, Rose is sort of our engine, right? She keeps everything going and she has such, she's spinning so many plates at the same time. Whereas like you very accurately just stated, she's doing all that and I'm sort of staring, um, trying to be interesting while I do it. But I have to ignore the ghosts and Rose has to ignore me. And I think she has the hardest. I would say though, Utkash, that you, you know, you say that, I've heard you say that you think you stare into the middle distance and I'm like, you fill it like that's why we were so excited. We try to be, we try to be interesting while we're checked sure. out. We try to think about. I don't you think know. ten seconds could last on you without like a bazillion things happening. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not still. <laughs> there's yeah. action. There's emotion. There's stuff. Well, I mean, Rose, for you, it feels like sometimes, even though yes, you are acting, but there's some of these scenes where the collection of ghosts are just shouting at you, trying to get your attention. And there's Brooklyn behind me, if you heard that horn, uh, are shouting to get your attention. That has to be distracting, even as an actor just trying to deliver lines. I think it's just like being on a film set. It's sort of, um, it feels like that, where there's, you know, you are trying to service a whole lot of different um, people and things. And it's something that I actually enjoy about the job is it's sort of about like uh, how you listen to an enormous group of people and try to give what what you can to the various people um it just felt like a lot of parallels to me in in some ways it's sort of trying to spin plates and keep Mm -hmm. everybody feeling heard and tended to so i i enjoy that i mean it's a really rewarding character to be able to step into obviously there's there's plenty um to occupy her mind (laughs) yeah Uh, okay it seems like um this could be an exceptionally difficult show to uh well blocking on this show has to be exceptionally difficult because you can't really physically interact with the other ghosts that are surrounding you is that a challenge at times to not physically interact with these ghosts well i mean yeah just from a technical standpoint anybody who has been a huge fan has already pointed out the times when my finger has gently brushed (laughs) someone's dress or you know, we got a lot of people in a small space, so that has created some issues. And then just from an acting perspective, we, we were talking about it today on another panel for SAG. Uh, they're just so funny. The, our ensemble is so bright and vibrant, and um, it's very hard to ignore them. It's hard not to really want to engage and laugh and be entertained by them. And uh, when, when they're really firing, which of late we've all been really firing, on, on all cylinders, it's tough. It's it's hard to pretend they're not there because they're just so under, they're so good at their jobs. But that becomes, speaking, yeah, that becomes the rush. Hey, that's like you know we see that people are not as you were talking about earlier. People can sense that their jokes are landing and that the work is translating when they get us to crack. So you can kind of see people working extra hard to uh, engage and push things when they can see they're working. And I think it's like part of what kind of brings that magic all together. Mm-hmm. But the Joes here, the Joes have a very difficult job of defining the mythology of this world, right? Like, what surfaces can we sit on? What surfaces okay. can they walk through? Why don't they fall through the floor? Like, there are so many ghost rules. And how are- do you surface 10 characters? And um, it's, I mean, it's an incredible art to definitely weave through everybody's stories. And just when you're ready to, you know, you're really missing a character, they pop back in. I, I don't know. Talk about spinning plates. These guys are mm-hmm. spinning. Well, then, and the, the counter to that, though, is that we have this giant grist pile to, you know, for, for the mill. Mm. Uh, there's so many directions to go and everything. And, and like they were saying, everyone in the cast is just incredible. And we have so many different directions to go because of that as well. Um, but uh, you, 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 you said it, but both Rose and Uktarsh, Uktarsh uh, just have uniquely difficult and cool jobs like one can see them all one can't see them and so uh, both of them are just so adept at what they're doing uh one of my favorite things is uh Utkarsh after almost every guest cast who comes in and he's like they were amazing we gotta have them back and I'm like mm-hmm. is that because you can talk to them and he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the challenge on the writing side as well is to 
<laughs> sure that his character is involved. And, you know, we've, we've, I think part of that is a challenge, but part of that also is a, a story tunity to sort of come up with ways. And I think that that's led to a couple of really nice episodes, uh, like the one where Hetty possesses his body. Totally. Um, and, uh, yeah. and I love the one where we get to meet Jay's sister. Like it and makes Jay's me sister. so happy to see his world, to see where he's from, um, what Sam's trying to integrate with. Like, it, it, I thought it provided tons of great opportunities and, and obviously great dynamics with the ghosts as well. Mm -hmm. So um, she was awesome. But you know, let me back up just a little bit. It's, you know, there's the old expression that if you have to explain a joke, it's it's no longer funny. <laughs> uh, and yet you, you kind of have this uh, rules to this universe. Did you start out with sort of the the jokes of the ghosts, the, you know, uh, not having pants, the, you know, the, that kind of thing, and then build out the, the rules of this universe, or did you start with the rules and then create the ghost from there? And I realize also some of these were adapted from the ghost that existed in the, the British version, but, uh, which, which came first, uh, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 some of it was uh, born out of the British show, and that was like a, a launching off point, obviously. Um, but we have, in, in some roles uh, of their show, we honor, and then other ones we deviate from. And some, I have been told that we deviated from that I didn't even realize that, that they didn't uh, have a similar role. But, um, like, there, mostly it comes from us asking questions in the writer's room, basically things that we'd like to know, like, do ghosts have sex? And if so, you know, like it, so from that comes a conversation and then comes a bunch of rules that we have to figure out what that means. And, and then that usually ends up in the show because it's just interesting to us. And uh, it's just something that like, uh, you know, we think that um, the ghosts would, um, would so think that Sam and Jay in particular, it would want to know about, uh, about the ghosts that he can't see. He's, he's very interested in learning all about them. Mm. And and welcome back, Ukarsh. I thought you I thought you actually did ghost us. And, oh, yeah. and I tried. I really did. No, the hotel that we're staying in just randomly logs me out of the internet every night. You get it. You get it. This was like, nah, bro, you're having too much fun. One thing I do love is um, the conspiracy theory stuff that Jay gets into, like his his uh, very um, detailed, obsessive thinking that we get to see pop out in these amazing moments. Because in my mind, with Sam being a type A, a lazier writer could have given her all of the obsessive tendencies and all of the um, the qualities that I like seeing the contradictions that come up where she's the one to talk Jay off a ledge on occasion as well. And we get to see these real strengths and weaknesses in them as a couple. And we root for them as a couple, which is pretty incredible given what she's asked him to do. And the, the dynamic, I think it's it's a really awesome thing that we've been able to, um, hopefully between us and, you know, being friends in real life and I know his wife and it's it's been able to feed actually translating as a couple that we really do want to work out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, something that I really applaud about Jay's character is that it would be so easy to just be the non-believer throughout the course of even if it was just the first season except jay seems to come along pretty quickly and then because he's a nerd he has the sort of this reference guy that he can pull from like this is hey look once you start messing with the space time continuum or the ghost time continuum you're really gonna you risk screwing things up um i ukarsh i want to kind of get your reaction on that about being the nerd and why that's kind of cool that you came along pretty quickly and then also uh joe Wiseman, speak to why you made that choice uh yeah it's a pleasure well i mean look it's a love story they said it's a rom-com and if jay doesn't believe sam then we don't have a show right he this is his wife and he wants her to be well and um also yeah he has a vast knowledge of the of everything involved here whether it be dungeons and dragons gi joe the occult uh the marvel universe not so much dc because they've really been slacking of late <laughs> well, we hope flashpoint will be better but who knows but um i think jay really buys in and what's fun is he's really uh, your window as an audience into what is the hell is going on and all of the questions you might have as an audience 
th those are the same questions he has and he's excited by it you know whether it's uh whether ghosts can be intimate with one another or mm -hmm. and how that works or uh, you know just just all the rules we have a great episode tonight where we meet uh, a new character we meet hetty's husband played by matt walsh who's just an og of the comedy world and uh, he's stuck in a vault and we, there's some rules around the physical nature of this vault and the ghosts bodies that Jay's fascinated by. So in this way, like the Joes get to sort of address all of the questions like, Hey man. And in terms of his belief in Sam, that's just love, man. That's just unconditional love. It's just what we all wish our partners would give us deep down inside. So yeah, Jay's getting some some major props for being like the dream dream husband, which is yeah. fair. I mean, he really does sign up for a lot. He's like he, he oh. does, <laughs> but like Joe Wiseman, the, so often these characters kind of push that point of skepticism, and they are the questioning part. It, it to a frustrating degree at times. Talk a little bit about bringing Jay on board kind of quickly. Well, I think I think Utkarsh hit on hit it on the head when he said excited. Like we thought it would be more fun if his character mm. was excited for this and almost kind of jealous even. Like like in a way, he's sort of like this should have happened to me because I have all these questions about like the supernatural and all these things because these shows I like. So we I, I think Joe and I early on just decided that would be a, a more fun color to play than someone who's always sort of like put upon and like I don't know as if those you know. Um, it was just sort of like, it, it just seemed more uh, entertaining to us. And some mm -hmm. people are like that. I feel like Devin Long, who plays Thorfinn in our show, if his wife told him she saw ghosts, he'd be like, great, tell me more. I want to know everything. Like, like he already board. has so many experiences. You know, I, I don't think, um, I, I think some people can suspend that a lot easier than others. <laughs> yeah, Devin would be like, are they hungry? Do they need yeah. something to eat? <laughs> are they keto? <laughs> yeah, are they keto? <laughs> Do you... I, what I love about this so far is that fans, the fan base is really getting caught up in the mystery of these ghosts death and uh, such as the what's up with Trevor's pants. And uh, Rebecca Wasaki, who plays Hetty, she said in another interview that we do learn a little bit about the mystery of the pants. So what can you guys tell us about the pants, the trousers mystery? And are there other backstories and ghost uh, mysteries yet to be revealed. Well, in an incredible plot twist, we learn that he never wore pants, Aaron. <laughs> it just never happened. Actually, that's like the M. Night, Night Shyamalan twist. Yeah, that is, that's <laughs> the one. That was sort of an interesting, uh, you know, I, the, the fan base and the cast is very uh, interactive on social media. And I, I really enjoy uh, reading it and, and reading the back and forth. And one thing that just kept coming up, everybody would ask, and in real life when I when I see people, just like, what happened to Trevor's pants? It's like the number one question <laughs> I get. So, you know, it's a little example of like uh, that sort of guiding. Uh, we're always looking for episode ideas. So we're like, well, let's, let's have fun. Let's sit down. Let's talk to the writers for two, three days. Let's figure this out and re yep. oh. Oh. We did yeah. figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so pick it up, Wiseman, pick it up. Uh, and and we think it's good. We don't want to give any spoilers. Uh, uh, that'll be coming down the pike. But I yeah, turned into a really fun episode that not only like, I, I hope answer the question in a fun way, but also provides a little bit of insight into just Trevor's character and learning a little uh, something surprising about him as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like Joe said, that that was a thing that we, also we were wondering from the all you know mm -hmm. us and the writers and and uh, from the very beginning we're sort of like what happened. Also, to this? This Aaron, happened? can you imagine in a cast of ten regulars how many ideas they get pitched by us all the time? The poor guys, I'm sure they have us all on mute. We're just like, what about this? And we all think we've like reinvented the wheel every time we suggest something too. Yeah. And they're very good at being That's like. Oh yeah, sometimes you know, they'll use them. <laughs> no, we love we 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 love all that stuff. We love. We it's love so um, incorporative, yeah. if that's a word. <laughs> check, yeah, check with my writer buddy. Is it incorporative? <laughs> yeah, it's incorporative. I think that's the word. I, but you know what's what's nice about the way that the Joes and and their writing team, our writing team, does these stories that I think have made them really successful and resonate with fans is you have this fantastical element, you have the paranormal, you have the spooky mm -hmm. and the goofy, but in every episode, including one about how a character lost his pants, 
you have something very touching and heartfelt. The reason Trevor lost his pants, I'm sure, is going to surprise a lot of people and uh, be very endearing to a lot of our audience who loves that character. In the same way that Roman's character, Sasapi's, um, when we delve into his backstory, we're really touched by the humanness that these ghosts possess, right? Pete's gets to see his grandson. Alberta finds out that she has a fan, a weird fan, but like she is remembered and, and loved. And I think that's what this show, especially during this time when there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of people have really been struggling. Um, a lot of people can just come to our show, have fun, laugh, and also be moved emotionally, feel some catharsis and some relief. Mm -hmm. And uh, these guys have done that really well. I, I like that you referenced uh, Sasapis because I, I forget which episode it is, maybe the Halloween episode. He jokes that uh, he's not uh, Lenape. He was actually an accountant that died at a Halloween cost, at Halloween party in the 90s or something. I, I totally love that, but it also makes my brain go into uh, overdrive and I start freaking out about, you know, what if I go in this? I mean, the yeah. idea that wherever I'm at, wherever I am and whatever I'm wearing, when I shuffle off this mortal coil, Boom, that could be it. This is what I'm stuck in. Has this given you any pause about the outfits and locations that you're spending time in? Because you never know. You never know. Rose, why don't you begin? Oh, um, you know, I think it's always important to wear clean underwear. Um, <laughs> yeah. That is my big thing. I always think more, I'm not thinking so much about being uh, a ghost afterwards. It's just like paramedics discovering you. Mm. You know, I'm like, just there's a certain <laughs> level of expectation that I think um, we can we can meet on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a very overdressed person. I think I get dressed up for work quite a bit. So in my own life, I think it would be a shambles if I was, I'd be in like sweats with my hair scraped back. Very disappointing. Very comfy though. That, yeah, that is a comfy, comfy. Yeah. comfy afterlife. I think if Brandon Scott Jones has taught us anything, if Isaac's character, who's in full woolen garb from head to toe, uh, it's definitely go out wearing some sort of elastic waistband and some sort of loose fitting top and you'll be happy. Like Alberta's got the best afterlife outfit. Mm. Good. That thing is covered in velvet. She's warm or cold. Still chic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks good and she's comfy. You mm. know what? I'm gonna. That's. What, I'm just gonna start wearing that in my personal life. <laughs> well, the, the, the the cast is living what you're talking about. The sort of having to wear the same thing over and over again. That was when we sort of coming up with the characters and what they were wearing, and then the costume designers. It was sort of like this. In the pilot, it was like we have to get this right because hopefully they'll be wearing these, you know, for for years and years to come. And there is the sort of like the the weak point of comfort in all of the costumes, I think have sort of like uh, started to, to poke themselves out. Like you mentioned Br you know, Brandon Scott Jones, who like in the summer when we're shooting on location, it was sort of just like, oh, he's overheating. And now that it's very cold outside, we don't go cold outside because one of our actors can't put on pants. Another one's wearing a summer dress. And I think Brandon's kind of like, oh no, you can't go. <laughs> it's sort of like, you can't win. But yeah, we it was it was it was a lot of pressure to make sure we got we, we got those right. And, but uh, those are the decisions that get made. I mean, you know, we have an incredible team of designers and people who work on that. But mm -hmm. it's so interesting when you shoot a pilot, things are decided on like that. And then the commitment is made for a very long time. And I remember after I Zombie, where I wore a white wig in the pilot, we made that decision in an hour between like, mm -hmm. I was on another project and we were like, great, let's do this. I was in that white wig for <laughs> five years. So like, um, it is, I just find that so fascinating, the pilot to series, um, yeah. the, the impulse which, with which you have to kind of work at the start and then the commitment that follows on from that. Yeah, yeah cool you know, idea you know, that you then live with. Sorry, Jeff. No, I'm just saying it because you never have as much time as you as you want to sort yeah. of yeah. ruminate on it and stuff. So. In, in as much as you can say within this world, uh, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but look, we've already, ghosts are real, uh, and they've watched Ghostbusters. Are there Ghostbusters in this uh, in this world, within the Ghosts universe? Are they there? Yes, we have Bill Murray coming. <laughs> we, uh, That's Dan a good booking. We left Aykroyd. a message on his service, so he's going to show up at some point. Mm -hmm. We got Aykroyd at the Sagnum. He's coming. <laughs> and then, of course, we're going to have some aliens, as I always say. You don't you but, worry, Aaron. But truly, I mean, this does open the door to being sort of the paranormal investigators that look for these things. Wiseman, you're you're shaking, you're nodding yes. your head. 
So I'm not, I, you know, I, we don't necessarily have any stories that tackle that right now, but it is something that's been discussed. And I would say that anything that sort of exists in the real world, as far as people be, actually being Ghostbusters or claiming to be, is definitely something that I think we will we will mine at some point. Yeah, and also, you know, interestingly, at the end of uh, the Jay's sister episode with Poonam Patel, who was so great, um, you know, that was the first time when Sam. Uh, shared her secret with someone other than Jay. So, you know, it's fun to sort of uh, set up these uh, little things to then lead to other things later. And, uh, you know, now the secret is outside the tiny circle of trust that we had. So, you know, um, it opens itself up to discovery. And I'm going to pitch um, in front of you, Aaron, because that will make this legally binding. Uh, the idea that somebody, I can't remember which cast member came up with, but that uh, Jay's sister comes and moves in for a stretch of time and she's living in the spare room as a Peloton instructor. And we find <laughs> out that the one thing that the ghosts can physically move is a Peloton bike. And they're all fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll get in there. Second season, watch out. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Oh, man. And better get in there fast because Peloton just announced that they're ceasing operation or, or stopping manufacture of new bikes. So in a way, it's a oh, ghost wow. exercise machine. My for the ghost. Dead. Yeah, well, we did see a Peloton kill someone. So it only makes sense that we would see. A oh, yeah. In more ways than one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I didn't know that. That's crazy. <laughs> Do you, I, 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 I really enjoy these cholera um, uh, patients and people who have died in the, in the cellar and this notion that what we think are maybe scary ghosts are just misunderstood and quite knowledgeable about plumbing. <laughs> do we have, do we have legitimately bad or scary ghosts within this world? People, you know, ghosts that are, they want to freak out the living. They want to do harm. I think Absolutely. we, okay. yeah, I think we meet. I think we meet one tonight on tonight's episode. We have a, what is the word? I can never say it. Malevolent, 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 a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the way that the um, the way that the episode ends is so fun. And then we also meet uh, our uh, who Odessa. You guys want to talk about Odessa? Please, yeah, tell me. Wait, this is a me... real spoiler, isn't it, guys? Uh, yeah, tell yeah. About, um, well, well, um, yeah, in an upcoming episode, uh, Odessa Azayan, um, she uh, we we discovered it's not it's not a discovery to the ghost, but it's a discovery to uh, Jay and Sam that uh, this young girl that got killed on her prom night in 1987 is a ghost that lives in the attic um and she's roused from her slumber she because she's a teen ghost she tends to sleep a lot so basically she sleeps for months on end and so they haven't seen her yet but she's roused uh when jay uh goes up to the attic to get some stuff from storage and makes a a, a lot of uh commotion and then um so she comes down and she's a bit of a uh, adversary for sam yeah oh okay she's like the young new cool kid on campus yeah who sam is so desperate to be liked by uh -huh. yeah that's <laughs> what i love about sam is like she's she's constantly trying to be the mother essentially to all these ghosts and take care of everyone's needs but really she just wants jay's sister to call her a sister she just wants like everyone she's just very sweet you know it's it's nice and i think it's a great dynamic to see her be so strong and forceful and overwhelmed, but then just deeply want to be loved at the same time. Well, I think that's what makes her um, very accessible. You know, I think that, that's what I like is that she is this person who's overbearing and overwhelming, but when you know that she's doing it with this desperate need to be um, approved of and to be loved, it's like, again, every time we see those opportunities in the script that that comes up, it's just, as an actor, it's a field day to be like, great, great, I get it. I get her. I know I know what she's doing. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I don't, I don't want to inject too much pathos into this show, but there is something about watching uh, Jay and Sam. They're kind of figuring out where they are, they are in lives and who they are and what it's like to be 
an adult and then we well you know in this this next stage of life and meanwhile we have these ghosts that kind of say hey guess what even in your afterlife you haven't figured out life and it's it's interesting sometimes a bummer depending on how you look at that notion but am i hitting on something there yeah for sure one of the ways we sort of conceived of the show too is like the two the the livings and the ghosts sort of help each other uh you know because they all have sort of different perspectives based on lives lived and lives wanting to live and and for sure the, the ghosts you know a lot of them are centuries old and have a sort of and have seen it all and have seen people so they sort of can offer a perspective to this young couple that's sort of coming up and and, and the, the the opposite of that is you know that sam and jay can sort of like help them with sort of intractable roommate issues that have sort of come up over the centuries and other and other things, you know, even if it's just as simple as being able to find information for them or, or, or whatnot. So we always pictured it as like the, the two sides help each other and help each other grow and help each other become and better. Even when I read the pilot, I remember the big standout to me was just that like in a show about accommodation, about a B and b it's about accommodating and it's about accommodating each other. It's about the fact that not everybody is going to think like you. Not everybody is going to feel like you. There is something valuable to be ascertained if you listen to everybody. And that, um, you know, I love the moments where characters that might have less progressive uh, or less developed kind of ethos in some ways are able to bring something really constructive and useful to another area in life. And um, I just think it's a nice mirror to be holding up in the world right now, obviously. You should yeah. just wait till, wait till Thor goes to therapy. That that's mm -hmm. like a Viking sitting in therapy, using the modern tools of our day to get through his trauma. And you can imagine as a Viking, he's got a lot of it. Dude, I sell the shit out of this show. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What a plug. <laughs> oh my well, God. it is look, it comes across the living have breathed new life into the into the dead, you know? It's uh it it comes across. I you know. I am not going to ask you because this, I know this is going to be, this is journalist like uh, sort of boilerplate to say, do you believe in ghosts? I'm not going to ask you that. I'm not going to do it. But what it's I am going to ask. Than asking us who's our favorite, which is the other one. <laughs> who's your favorite? Well, that was going to be the fault. Now this is awkward. That was going to be fault. No, I'm, I'm actually just curious. Is like, not so much if you believe in ghosts, but like when you were kids, were there was there like that creepy old house down the lane sort of like this manor that was known throughout your neighborhood as being the haunted spot the place you don't go near because old man jenkins or whatever haunts the place or whatever it is did you have any of those urban legend level haunted houses in your neighborhood well i i grew up um in altoona pennsylvania and uh two blocks from my house was this Gilded Age mansion uh, called Baker Mansion um, that was on this hill with these Roman columns. And it's just, it's wow. crazy that it's just in this regular, normal neighborhood. And uh, that's where Joe and I got the names uh, Hetty uh, and Elias. Um, Elias is, uh, is, is played by Matt Walsh in tonight's episode um, and is the husband of uh, Rebecca Wasaki's Hetty character. And uh, so um, basically, the, he was like uh, some the 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 bakers in, in Altoona were like, you know, from that age and just build this gaudy house. And, uh, you know, it's not based it, the characters are not based on Hetty and Elias Baker, but it was just it was an inspiration just growing up down the street from that. And, and it, it uh, had a lot of interest in that time period. Clearly made a mark. Yeah. How about the rest of you guys? I can't think of any place that was haunted as a child, ex except for maybe the laundry room. There was like the laundry room in the basement, and I was not going near that. But that's not, I'm pretty sure I was the only one. There, that was not like a community wide fear. Well, that happens to Sam, dude. Like, have you seen yeah. this show? It can be just one person who experiences it. <laughs> that's the whole premise, dude. <laughs> yeah. Maybe was, you were tuned was, in. I certainly hope not. I just hope, I hope there was not anything down there. You were, you were like little Haley Joel Osment uh, when you were a kid. <laughs> uh, Joe Wiseman or Rose, any any locations like from your upbringing that were known to be the creepy haunted place? You know, I don't know of any in my in my area. I did uh, it, it, in college. I actually had like a ghost experience. It's a whole long story. I won't get into it. But ultimately, I've discovered uh, years later. That basically what it is, I, I suffer from sleep paralysis, which is oh, sort of yeah. 
uh, condition. Not, I'm not saying ghosts aren't real or are or, or not, but but I think it, it actually clinically explained everything that was happening to me. But it's a sort of this phenomena that they think yeah. explain a lot of it. And so, but I, I didn't know about that. <laughs> so for years, I thought I was having these experiences that were really kind of freaking me out because they're they're actually happening to you. So so yes, my my apartment in Boulder, Colorado, uh, when I was a sophomore in college, was very haunted. I that's thought, totally traumatic. That's yeah, traumatic. that's terrifying. I, I, it was it was a it was very traumatic because I thought this yeah. I thought it was insane, and I was like, I didn't want to tell anyone because it was like. I'm so sorry, Joe. Is this the first time you've talked about it? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I mean, with you guys, but no, I've talked. Joe Port's probably rolling his eyes. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I man. Didn't, I didn't have any um, haunted houses around my place, but I do feel like um, I feel really strong vibes in a place that I go into. I know if it's somewhere that I want to be or I don't want to be in my parents' house. is like, it's a super loaded vibe. It's my childhood home. They still live in it. I love it to death, but it's like um, there's a lot of land in New Zealand that's considered tapu or sacred. Um, yeah. And you have to have it blessed if you plan on selling it or doing anything. And it's we're very close to the site of like big burial grounds. And it's always felt very um, kind of something that commands my attention, just like the vibe of, of the of the house. Yeah. I don't know how you can go to New Zealand and not feel like connected to just something oh, yeah. old and deep there. But Joe Wiseman, I have to say, just as an aside, that is terrifying, especially because every culture has tried to explain some version of sleep paralysis, whether it's old hag syndrome or whatever it might be. And the, the really spooky thing about it is we have an idea about what's going on with our brain when it happens, but there's still mystery behind exactly why it is happening. Yep, 100%. And there are some weird, even though now I'm sort of like, oh, with sleep paralysis, there are some things that I are, are really weird about it. The, the short version is like basically... Uh, I would I, I I would have different uh, specific ghosts visiting me. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought were ghosts, but it's the process. But they were specific to the location. So, for instance, the when I lived in in this apartment in Boulder, Colorado, it was this uh, like fourteen year old girl who claimed to have been murdered, who just wanted to live again and wanted to like needed permission to enter my body. And and but like there was a sense of uh, like here, here's that word I can't say malevolence. Uh, yeah. And and uh, and I finally asked her to stop coming. She did. But and then and then later I moved to California. There was like this little gnome who would come. So like the 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 hallucinations or whatever they were were very specific to the location, which is a very sort of like why would that be? Why would so there are there are there are even though I'm sort of like oh yeah no I think it's a you know a neurological thing and it has there's one that's decidedly scarier than the other one's i mean i'm not to belittle oh. your experience but one's a gnome and one's oh yeah no no the the the, the that was the, the girl was the creepiest thing in the world that's terrifying it's awful gnomes but, are terrifying rose about the the gnome the gnome was then actually when i discovered i like i the internet was sort of new at this point <laughs> so I, I i was you know i somehow came upon the sleep paralysis and i tell you when i read it it was just such a like Oh my God! Yes, this is this is what's happening and everything. And th they sort of gave you advice on like if you're having an episode, here's try to ba basically just concentrate on moving your finger. And once you do that, then suddenly you can because yeah. you're paralyzed. And then suddenly you and so I remember there was this this fucking gnome. Sorry, I don't know if we can swear. Like <laughs> lived, lived in the closet in my apartment, and it would come out and mess with me, and I was paralyzed, couldn't do anything. And then I figured, and doing all this, I figured out this thing, and so it came out, and it was like coming up my bed and I, I sort of like move your finger, move your finger. And I moved my finger and I, I sat up and I grabbed him and I remember snapping his arm and he like dissolved in my hands. And then I never saw him again, even though like, I still like, it was like in that apartment, I like got rid of him weird. Like he was, so it's like, it's just weird stuff like that. Like, Hort, is this a normal thing that you've heard lots? Like, is this- I've heard this, I have heard this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, well, I mean, within folklore, uh, yeah, first off, you can swear when it comes to gnomes and trolls and whatnot, because they're typically not the nicest beings within folklore. They're not nice entities. They're not just protecting your garden. They can be nasty little buggers. So oh, this guy, Yeah, this guy wasn't hiding it. He was basically yeah. with you. You can't do anything and all this stuff. And the, 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 the girl ghost pretended to be nice. She was like, just please, I just want to be alive again. And it was just sort of like, and but like everything screamed like, do not do. It was like, wow. it was, 
yeah, it was all, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Wise men, you and I, you let me know. We're, we're doing a spinoff on Travel Channel. Oh, you can call me. Go back to revisit those sites. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. That's, that's amazing. Oh, my God. That'd be so weird. <laughs> that is, that is legitimately induce, crazy. Can we induce sleep paralysis? Because if we could, that would be very interesting. We that's could actually idea. film his sleep paralysis, which seems very malevolent in of itself to do, but yeah, I don't uh, think I ever had like a pleasant. I'm trying to think if I had pleasant people that were visiting well, me, but you I just know. volunteered, bro. We just sold this. Uh, now yeah. you're. What are we gonna do? We got two this is happening now. Uh, well, well, let me before as we wrap things up. I am curious. The you know before like let's say early 2000s, nobody really wanted to talk about it if they had a restaurant or a b and or hotel that was haunted. It was sort of, you know, taboo. You just don't really talk about it. And then with the rise of, you know, reality TV shows, paranormal reality TV shows, it became good for business. Ghosts were good for business. You you sell the room with a boo. So do you, <laughs> if, if you guys were to, I'm curious, if, but <laughs> you can use that. Um, if you were going to uh, open a B and B, and you knew that it was haunted. Would you would you be promoting the ghosts as uh, part of the business model, or trying to shy away from it? And I guess what I'm really getting to is are are our characters going to be leaning into this or not? So you personally, and then what about uh, Jay and Sam? I think Nathan for you did a whole episode on this. Did anyone see that? About marketing a haunted oh, yeah. space, it was very good. Oh, yeah. Really. yeah. So that idea is gone. <laughs> no, I think I would definitely. Lean into it. I think that's an interesting discussion for them to have. That sounds like a good episode. That that's something you know the 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 first season is sort of like heading towards them opening up the B and B at the end. Mm -hmm. So that this is sort of yes a very interesting thing that they could uh, deal with and discuss and debate and have fun with uh, in in a, in a season two for sure. Would you sell it? Would you would you use them as uh, as as your uh, marketing materials? Come stay at the haunted bait. haunted spot. Yeah, bait. Seems like a good. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Seems fun. <laughs> I think I'd shut it down, guys. I think I'd shut it down, close the doors, invite a shaman in, and try and cleanse the space. I think I really would because those guys, like in a real world, right? They want to ascend. We want it. this poor Vikings been stuck there for how many hundreds, thousands of years? Let's get him out of there. Let's get him back with his family. I think I would for sure just like I would try my best to send those guys off. But then we got to make money. It's a oh, man, these are tough, tough choices to make. <laughs> it's We've a conundrum. Get out of Excel spreadsheet, work out some risk analysis. Yeah. You know yeah. We, do? we should probably poll, see which ghost pulls in the most money. Who like, you know what I mean? Which ghost against each other. Money? Really? Yeah, yeah. Because probably the one that doesn't wear pants, you can send him off on his way. No one really, no one's super interested in that. Jay's been angling for that for a while anyway. No, 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 no. His, maybe if we get, find a way to get him pants, then he can stay. Okay. Although if if you would do it based more on who wants to stick around, I mm. think I think Trevor would probably be the one that would want to stick around, right? Because he seems like a little bit, he's on the voyeur side, so he would probably <laughs> dig sticking around as the resident ghost as long as he could so kind of check on everything the out. Side. <laughs> he's also yeah. kind of the strongest ghost. He's the only one with the ability to touch and manipulate the outside world to his whim which we saw last oh. week with uh, Jay's sister, right? Like he could right. really have a Netflix account if he wanted. Um, not also, also good for business, moving mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's true. Okay, we can keep his Trevor. Wife. We'll yeah. keep Trevor. We'll keep Trevor. Fair and and are, are people coming up to you guys, uh, Rosa Nukarsh, are they coming up and sharing now their own paranormal experiences? As this show, working on this show, open the floodgates for people wanting to talk about their own ghost stories. Maybe it will, but at the moment we're all walking around like this, so nobody ever mm. knows anyway. But um, I think I think yeah, it'll be definitely a conversation starter um, at conventions and things. I'm I'm excited to hear people's stories. I'm fascinated by ghost stories. I haven't had an experience myself, but I could listen to them all day. Yeah, okay. I would love that too. Right now we're just it's negative eight degrees in Montreal and people are just coming up like, Oh, it's cold as shit. That's pretty much it. <laughs> they don't care. And, if we're on a show. <laughs> and final question. Uh, just what are you guys uh, most excited about for 
when the show comes back with new episodes, what are you excited for uh, the audience to see? I'll go down the line. Joe Weisman. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to cheat and say it's like I, I, I'm, I'm excited for them to find out the, what happened to Trevor's pants. I think I think they'll be I think they'll be really happy with that uh, with that episode. The mystery of Trevor's pants. OK, Joe Port. Um, I'm excited for people to see the finale that we're filming right now and just uh, and uh, how that's going to launch uh, into a uh, second season. OK, Bukar Shambukar. Yeah, I think you're going to learn a lot more about Sasapis and Thorfinn. We'll, you know, we can deep dive on Trevor. Just this, the ghosts get a real chance to shine on, at, on the back half of the season. And then Prom was really sweet, too. I really enjoyed that. That was fun. All right. And Rose? Uh, I'm excited. Um, flowers, free love. We start to kind of get to enjoy some potential dynamics that come up. So I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to people seeing that. Sheila is just a brilliant actor and um i think we're going to really be able to tap into some of the magic of flower in these coming episodes all right well i'm excited to see it uh well ghost airs on cbs thursdays at nine eight central and you can catch up on episodes on paramount plus and guys thank you so much for joining me this was just a heck of a lot of fun rose mciver Bukar and Bukar and Joe Port and Joe Wiseman, thank you guys for your time. And uh, hey, stay spooky. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was really nice talking with you. See ya. Thanks.